Welcome to the Awaken Heart Podcast. I'm your host, Nancy Walters. Get ready to create magic and miracles as you lean into your heart's desires. I believe not only does the heart want what it wants, but it knows. This show is a weekly deep dive into what it means to live from an awakened heart. I'll be sharing inspiring stories and real conversations with people just like you who have turned the ordinary into the extraordinary. My mission is to show you how you too can be connected and heart-centered in every area of your life. Your journey to aligning with more love, more joy, and your wildest dreams come true starts now. Welcome back to the Awaken Heart Podcast. I'm Nancy Walters, and I'm really thrilled that you're here. I hope you uh, had a very wonderful Christmas holiday or Hanukkah or whatever you celebrate. And um, we're getting ready for the new year. Whole new year, man, 2023. What these last couple of years have been have been absolutely crazy and awakening in so many different levels. So many people have really seen the world in a whole new way. I believe most of us that are listening right now have never experienced what we have in the last couple of years where we were initially told to like cooperate and stay in our homes to help help stop the spread. And, you know, then it turned into more lockdowns. And then one thing led to another. Everything was just upside down. Things didn't make sense to a lot of people, myself included. And there was a whole medical push that was forced upon the masses. And if you even spoke out against it, you were censored, you were, you know, deemed as selfish, you were villainized, you were, you know, and these are just people that really did their own research and decided a certain medical intervention wasn't for them. So fast forward, now we're almost three years into it, and we're still under some sort of emergency orders, even though it's not all in our face. We're not forced to wear masks. We're not forced to stay home. A lot of the places that were doing the vaccine passports, I should say V passport, uh, (laughs) because this is probably going to get one of those lovely notices on them. So um, yeah, so the awakening, like we're realizing that, you know, maybe the people that are in charge do not have our best interests at heart when it comes to our health. And that's why it's so important to take our health into our own hands and do what intuitively feels right for us. Using maybe the integrative approach with some Western medicine, but then thinking outside of the box for something that will heal us, you know, not only just slapping a bandaid over like a problem, but healing the mind body, full body connection in healing and optimal health. And it's super important right now to really take our health into our own hands as you know, the band and the drum rolls on as certain things are pushed upon us, the more information we have, and the more we listen to our own bodies, the more you know, we can stay above it and following in line to something that, you know, might not feel right for ourselves, but we feel pressure to do something because they're saying that, you know, this is the right thing to do. You intuitively know what is best for yourself. Health is not one size fits all. It's an individual place and body sovereignty is so important and knowledge is so important. So even before the push of this last couple of years, there's been a lot of things that happen with a V. I'm going to just say V, you know, because there's so much censorship on this. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. So the V, a lot of people like were labeled anti Vers if you even like speak out against it. So there's been a lot of injuries that have happened even before this last year. I mean, this, this last couple of years, like literally we've seen the injuries the one year had more injuries than the last 30 years that were reported to the VAERS, which is the CDC reporting system. So all the reporting in VAERS, it had more V injuries in this last year. Well, where's the correlation? Like, okay, you know, put two and two together. So this isn't all just about Vs this episode, but it is about taking our health into our own hands and having that sovereignty. And so Today's guest is Amber Sims Hinterplattner. She has had a passion for nutrition since she was in high school, having helped to manage the local general nutrition center store at a young age, then being accepted into the number one university for nutrition while turning down a division one scholarship for playing water polo. 
Amber has been a fierce advocate for medical freedom regionally and nationally after her own personal healing journey following a major vaccine injury in 2005 as a collegiate athlete. Amber and her husband recently actualized their dream of opening a wellness center that helps people obtain optimal health. This beautiful center, Renewal Care Wellness, which I had the pleasure of using some of their treatments, and it's such an amazing place, and it's so well-timed, especially with a lot of people that are waking up to you know, the medical matrix and what has happened over the last couple of years and maybe realizing what they actually put into their bodies might not be the best thing for them. So a lot of these people, yourselves included, may be searching for something that's outside of the box to heal their body or heal the injuries that they might have that might have occurred by taking this medical intervention. Renault Care Wellness is an urban retreat and wellness center located outside of Portland, Oregon in the town of Beaverton, where body, mind, and soul are nourished through non-invasive, stress-reducing, age-inclusive, and scientifically-backed complementary wellness services. Grounded in a philosophy that embodies holistic support for you and your whole family by offering advanced well-being treatments not commonly found yet profoundly transformational. Each of Renewal Care Wellness's offerings are designed to help induce relaxation and relieve the body and mind from nervous tension and excess stress while helping to restore greater balance. So I'm sure you're going to find this episode very informative and very inspiring about taking our health, your health, into the next level of wellness because there's going to be a whole new way of health that is going to be outside of a lot of the normal systems that is actually about healing your entire body from the inside out. So enjoy this episode. Without further ado, here is Amber Sims Hinterplattner. Hi, Amber. Welcome to the Awaken Heart Podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Nancy. I'm really excited to be here. I am so thrilled to have you here. And I am so excited and beyond thrilled for what you have created and what you are just opening and offering to the city of Portland and Beaverton. And then it'll be beyond. You just opened Renewal Care Wellness Center. And I got the privilege of seeing your facility before it was even open and getting to experience some of these treatments that I really think is going to help transform health and people's wellness. And it's so important for something like Renewal Care Wellness to be open and for more of those facilities and more healthcare to be in this realm where it's overall health and healing yourself from the inside out and energetically as well. Because what we've seen over the last couple of years, you know, a lot of people are becoming more aware of how you have to think outside of the box when it comes to your health, because everything that we're seeing and hearing isn't necessarily in our best interest. And there's been a huge awakening on the planet, myself included, where I realized that the health system isn't really a health system. It's a sick system based on money. Although there are really good things for modern day Western medicine. Like if you get in a car accident or if you get, you know, if you have cancer treatments, even though there's other more holistic ways to heal cancer, like it's there for a reason, like there's things that you can get benefit out of it. But when we take control of our own health and what is best for us as individuals and address our root in health, you know, we're going to thrive. There's not one size fits all approach. And you have a really solid background in nutrition and in health and in wellness. Can you give us a little more about what might have led you to creating this wellness center? Oh my gosh, thank you. There's so many things I'd love to remark on because you packed such a powerful punch into that opening. Um, Absolutely, it's not a one size fits all. My own personal journey has shown me that you need a really large toolkit and you need to be your own best advocate. Growing up, spending a lot of time in nature, um, I was intuitively drawn towards natural healing alongside, you know, great Western medicine options as well. And a couple different times in my life, I've really been able to explore um, out of the box ideas. But really, my background with with sports, I was a a 
varsity athlete, water polo goalie all through high school. I played into college. Um, I actually turned down division, division one um, scholarships to study nutrition at the number one university for nutrition my first year of college and just was so in love with growing my toolkit. Little did I know that that would actually later lead to <laughs> some of the important pathway decision points for me for truly recovering from some pretty major health crises. So along the way, as an athlete, you come across different things that can possibly help you uh, with recovery and with strength and, you know, just overall renewal, basically. So it was really fun over the years to learn about hyperbaric oxygen as an athlete and some of these other modalities that actually have been around for a long time. And there are many, uh, you know, hospitals that have hard shell hyperbaric chambers in them for specific use case scenarios. But it was a little bit later in life that I absolutely had a desperate need to find and utilize these out of the box ideas. And they're really out of the box, but they're very complementary, and they work so synergistically with a lot of other treatment modalities and, and practitioner offerings out there. That's really what I wanted to do. I didn't want to create anything that would compete. I wanted to add more tools, both for my own family and for my community and hopefully for the world at large eventually. So, you know, being a type A personality with being a, an overachiever with sports uh, and academics, that led me also to feel burnout, I think, a little bit earlier in life. Uh, I started my own business with my husband uh, right after we got married and was awarded 40 Under 40 Award when I was 31 and was just go, 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 go. And then when I was 33, we had our daughter and I just hit a wall that was really difficult to kind of surmount because I was still trying to work and be that type A personality and, and work a ton, but be completely nourishing and give everything into our relationship with, with our daughter and be fully present. So that was one of the eye-opening um, scenarios for me, becoming a mom and realizing that really we can't do it all without something giving. And typically for women, I feel like that actually comes at our own expense with our health. It's, it, you know, I think that was one of the major milestones and benchmarks for me, but there's even, there's other parts of my wellness journey where I sadly had situations happen to me with, this is a little bit harder to talk about because it's kind of controversial for some. And this happened a long time ago in 2005, so long before the current uh, situation with CV, we'll, we'll say. <laughs> um, but when I was a collegiate Code words. athlete, yeah, I know. When I was a collegiate athlete, I was asked to take a bunch of booster shots for continuing to play water polo. And I didn't really think anything of it, but I knew enough about nutrition. I knew enough about ingredients that uh, to ask uh, and research thimerosal, which was an additive and an adjuvant that's pretty typical. And I was just told by my very wonderful campus doctor, but that it was just a tiny amount. It wouldn't do any harm for me. And that absolutely is possibly the case for others. However, for my body, even as a healthy 25 year old, perfect, like, I mean, I, I, I cherish those days. I, I looked uh, beautiful. I felt like I looked at, you know, the perfect picture of health for me. And I was wiped out. I took four boosters in one day and the thimerosal was a huge deal as were other adjuvants. My entire system basically started collapsing in some ways um, and I developed major issues. I went to the same campus, campus doctor a couple weeks after she administered them within my health crisis as it was emerging. I couldn't breathe. They had no idea what was wrong with me. They thought I actually had tuberculosis. They had no clue. Here's this athlete that literally the day before I swam to train for the season, I swam three miles in a row in an uh, Olympic sized pool nonstop, literally got in the pool, swam three miles, got out. That's a lot of laps. That's a lot of laps. And the next day I couldn't breathe and it was totally heart wrenching. I had no idea what had happened. I hadn't connected the dots yet. 
but I went to this doctor and, and obviously got nebulizer treatments and all kinds of things to stabilize me and then went immediately to pulmonary specialist. They did chest x-rays. They um, did a lot, but they never asked like, hey, was there something you did in the last couple of weeks that may have triggered this? So it would be another year and a half to two years until I truly connected the dots. But in the meantime, you know, I was put on various steroids to control uh, the situation with my breathing. I was given multiple, um, you know, inhalers. I actually, um, once I stabilized though, started to decline again because these medications uh, really didn't jive with my system. But thankfully I had known enough about nutrition earlier to intuitively go towards detox. I just felt like my body just needed to detox. And so I sought out various methods to do gentle detox over the next few years. My skin certainly was detoxing. I had worse acne uh, or really, I don't even want to call it that. It was just my skin trying to get rid of things. That's one of my issues. People who like me have sensitive genetics. We don't have detox pathways that are wide open like other people, right? So your body looks for other ways to get rid of toxins that you've maybe encountered. So my lungs were the issue, my skin, gastrointestinal challenges. I suddenly couldn't eat like a whole host of foods that I had ne never had issues with before. So it was, it was awful because I was a year and a half out from graduating with my undergrad and in, in media and marketing and journalism as a, you know, dean's list, president's list type student, editor of the newspaper, you know, trying to play water polo, trying to do it all as that type A personality. And it was a, a really a major, a major piece that set me back, but it put me on a particular path. And so I have no, no hard feelings for what happened to me because it's really led me to so many wonderful people, so many wonderful tools for my wellness journey. And it's allowed me to be an advocate for others and for, you know, even members of my family to look at genetics and see that even though some parts of medicine say this is one size fits all, there are other parts of medicine that truly honor that genetics are super unique and everyone has their own fingerprint, if you will, for how they're going to respond to different things. So I've just, yeah, I've, I've had to endure a lot, but along the way, I would say God has just used my my challenges for good. And it's just been a complete, like, everything's just been laid out in a way that has allowed me to see the beauty, even though it's, it was quite destructive for, for my own physical health. Now I get to, to help others and myself with these amazing tools that we brought forward through our wellness center. And because of that injury, it led you down. I mean, we all go in down into that rabbit hole about what these vaccines actually are. And that's the thing you, when you started talking about your injury, about how it's like such a taboo thing to talk about because of the onslaught that we experienced over the last couple of years. And we should be able to talk about these things. It's our health, it's our bodies, and we're experiencing these things. But a lot of people like yourself, it's like, there's like something happens to you like, oh no, you've got anxiety or, oh no, it can't be this. You're totally gaslit. So it's left so many individuals like with no help, like you're on your own kind of thing. And so devastating, but you turn that into good. Like you had trust in your higher power. You went to listen to your intuition about how to naturally detox this from your system, looking to, towards alternative therapies. And you use this, you know, your pain into you know, what you experience into the greater good for your family and for society. Cause I know you were very involved in the medical freedom movement, which I actually met you through autumn because at this time, when, you know, this whole, what happened in the last couple of years, we were looking for people to connect with because <laughs> there was literally a campaign after all of us. And we are the ones that were standing strong to our integrity. We knew what was happening. We saw what was happening, but we weren't going to fold. I mean, I think a lot of us were ready to run off into the hills, which I would be if it kept moving forward, which is the way it's supposed to be. But you did a lot for the medical freedom movement. Can you speak into that a little? 
Absolutely. And I would say, you know, for those of us who had a lot of questions and our questions were being shut down, that kind of gaslighting is just awful, right? Um, and I, I don't agree with pushing something, mandating something that is still in phase three clinical trials mm -hmm. um, and also does not have any financial liability tied to it. You know, we can sue if there's an issue with our cars. You know, consumers have a lot of rights in a lot of genres. You know, I'm originally from California and California has extra consumer protections for everything except this class of pharmaceutical products. And it's just, you know, it's devastating. I will say that I feel lucky because I was an adult. And so I could advocate for myself differently. You know, parents who are gaslit when their children has an issue, it's just heartbreaking. And I've met many children who have been injured and it's heartbreaking because their life um, it may be years and years before any dots are connected, if the dots are ever connected to support, you know, opening up those detox pathways, removing toxins, living a healthy lifestyle and advocating for your family members. But it was in California uh, in 2014 that my, my background, having studied, you know, marketing, media, journalism, uh, psychology, all of these concepts. I was sort of blown away when the measles outbreak in California like just cropped up and it was plastering all of the news in 2014, in the winter. And I was just like, well, this is crazy. Why are they focusing in on this in such a, a narrow way? I, I get that it's absolutely a concern. But I, the first thing I did was I went online to see how many measles cases were in California the year prior. And it was like hundreds more. And I thought, well, this is weird. And then I saw suddenly that the California state legislature was pushing forward a bill that would in fact kick my own daughter out of the possibility for going and attaining an education, private or public in California. And I come from a family of teachers and inclusivity, right? And this was just completely asinine to me that legislators would actually, you know, push forth a medical bill that, you know, isn't going to jive with what multiple pediatricians and doctors from my own family care has said for our family history. So when that bill was being rammed through, and then I watched and I saw that it was supposed to go through the education committee and the appropriation committee, because obviously it has to do with education, mandating that not only the current schedule be for every single child, but the open-ended clause and anything they add into the schedule, right? So fast forward today, we know what that is. However, this just was so mind-blowing to me. And then it skipped the money appropriations committee and the education committee. So it felt like I was witnessing this, this piece of politics that I had never closely watched before. And for something of that magnitude, for dozens of families that I knew personally, you know, who want to work privately with their um, healthcare providers and their doctors, right? It just was sounding the alarms for me uh, as a parent, uh, as a, you know, professional. And I was hearing the same from several doctors too, who had grave concerns based on the patients that they were seeing. So I have to say that that was really heart-wrenching. Uh, my home state of California to see that get rammed through. And that was the final straw for us to, to actually pick up and leave California. Um, mm -hmm. I was really heartbroken. I could cry right now because I felt like I had to move my, from my home state in order for my daughter just to go to school. It mm -hmm. didn't make any sense to me. She can't get everything that's recommended. She just can't. Her, it's too much of a risk, right? And multiple pediatricians have openly discussed that and verified that with us. So we moved to Oregon and I had already started, you know, following information, looking at not only the, the ingredient list and all the information the CDC put out directly, I started looking at the vaccine events, adverse events reporting system, theirs. When I had my vaccine injury, I had never, ever, ever been told about this reporting mm -hmm. system that I could have entered my own data into. So that was really amazing to see that. But then I, I saw Oregon had also been going through the same bill concept, that same legislative cycle. 
and thankfully it was struck down. There were some incredible people, Dr. Paul Thomas, um, J.B. Hanley, uh, Jennifer Margulis, so many, many others who came together in Oregon and actually on the ground uh, connected, testified against the bill. The bill was dropped. That was also in 2015. And Oregonians for Medical Freedom you know, was created from that very grassroots effort. And so I got asked actually to join Oregonians for Medical Freedom as a publicist, as a media and marketing professional the, the grassroots space really needed my skill set. And so it was an honor to join leadership for Oregonians Medical Freedom back in uh, early 2016, shortly after we moved here. And so much has transpired in that time frame. A lot of little bills and then another big effort in 2019 to push the same legislative mm -hmm. concept. And I mean, it, to give some scale at the time in 2019, it would have kicked out an estimated 60,000 children from an education here in Oregon. And they were trying to say, oh, well, online schooling is an option. Mm -hmm. Really? What about all the special needs kids that need mm -hmm. those physical services? What, what about all the kids that rely on food, you know, from, from visiting school? And so that was really a huge effort. My husband and I, who had started a marketing agency, dedicated our, our everything for more than a year for that particular legislative cycle and through the collective effort of so many hardworking moms and dads and doctors and professionals and legislators that didn't agree with it in Oregon, it was stopped, thankfully. In 2021, believe it or not, they tried again. But this time, thankfully, it didn't leave committee. And we used some of the very words that leaders in Oregon had said, we used those words and reflected them back to them. Governor Brown had said online learning because of CV. We had all seen that it was a major failure. So she had already publicly said online learning is inequitable. Uh, the director of education, Colt Gill, had said, you know, schools are not super spreader sites. And a doctor from OHA had said, oh, we're not even tracking other illnesses right now. We're just focused on CV. So we just reflected back in a press release all those uh, key quotes and helped to squash it because the, the bill they tried to retool simply said, oh, instead of kicking them out this time, we'll just, you know, we'll channel them to online schooling. We'll lift the cap on how many students can go to online school. And it just would have been an even bigger catastrophe. So it died in committee. And then sadly, OHA, Oregon Health Authority, tried quietly to actually go in and then change with saying some things and then not saying certain things through OAR, Oregon Administrative Rule Changes, they were trying to actually change the meaning of immunity to be vaccine induced only. And they were trying to do things mm -hmm. in, in rules separate from and totally circumvent circumvent the state legislature, right? These publicly elected officials weren't even going to have a say. OHA, unelected officials, uh, you know, unelected um, bureaucrats, basically, were going to try to go in and change rules. So it was just really profound through my grassroots efforts and different groups that I was connected with both here in the state and, and nationally. Stand for Health Freedom is another incredible advocacy group, uh, nonpartisan as well. We had 15,000 uh, letters sent to OHA last December, I think. This is when they were trying to do this. So you know, we brought well, we were, attention we were wished a winter of death right. <laughs> last winter. <laughs> I mean, it's, just, <laughs> it's, it's really when you start to track these things and, and how blatantly obvious without a very public process, even, even if they try to say that it's public, oh, we're going to have this committee, we'll, we'll have public comment. This is happening right now or just happened where some committees, again, of unelected individuals that sit on a board to review information, say, we want public input. Oh, but guess what? We're only putting 15 minutes on our schedule and in our agenda for public input. And we can only take five people, three minutes each. And it's a lottery with who gets to speak. Oh how, how is that at all truly hearing from the public? So this is the part that is so profound and why everyone does need to pay attention in what's going on, whether it's at the school level, whether it's at the county level, community level, and, and just voice their opinion 
um, we can't stay quiet because sadly there's just too much money on the line mm-hmm. to railroad us into being yeah cash cows for mm-hmm. the largest industry in the world. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot more going on than just money with this latest this latest CV thing that's been pushed on everybody. It's still being pushed, even though there's truth that's finally coming out. We've seen it all along, but it's finally slowly coming out and they're still pushing this upon people. And that's why it's so important to advocate and thank God for people like yourself and these organizations that have advocated this entire time or some of these draconian things would be pushed through. I mean, health is an individual thing. Like even when they were putting masks on people, if you want to wear one, I mean, the science isn't there for that, but if you want to wear that, it makes you feel comfortable, then go ahead. But we knew that it wasn't going to do anything for us and was only going to be more adverse for our own health. And they're telling us what to do. I mean, someone might have, you know, they might be claustrophobic or they might have, maybe they were kidnapped and has trauma from the past. Like health is an individual approach, not one person. You can't mandate one size fits all for everybody. It's just not possible. And so what we're seeing now, because of what has happened over the last couple of years to the masses. And there's always been these injuries and, you know, the degrading of health because like the pharmaceutical industry, a lot of people are just putting a bandaid over with these pharmaceutical products, antidepressants and all that, that are really have so many adverse effects that are going along with it, adverse reactions. So seeing that there's another way to heal. Uh, It it is. It's really, it's it's difficult because it's a, it's a really broad topic and it's exactly right there, but it's part of this full spectrum conversation. You know, it is important that we all have a large toolkit. I have used different medications. I have used different practitioners at different times in my life. I have used alternative complementary. I mean, whatever you want to label it at various times. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's a time and a place for everything. You know, I, I, I absolutely, um, I've been through major injuries. I tore a rotator cuff five years ago. And this is actually when I finally tried hyperbaric oxygen and it was profound, right? And so I'm thinking, well, how is something that's completely non-invasive, relaxed-based, age-inclusive, not just broadly available? It's scientifically backed. The first hyperbaric chamber was actually created in the 1600s. And then they started refining and doing things in the 1800s, and then they kind of fell by the wayside. I haven't looked into too much of the history if, if it was really pushed aside. At the time, the Flexner Report was really, you know, trying to, to carve out a certain path for a certain kind of medicine and push aside all others. 1950s is when it reemerged, but there are so many examples of these powerful modalities that in some places and in some, you know, mainstream healthcare settings, they're very aware of it. I mean, we have OHSU, you know, gets a bad rap at times, but I know personally they do a great job with troubleshooting with in the ER. They have a lot of specialists. They do a lot to uh, offer a a well more uh, a rounded menu option for people who have um, special needs with their their foods in, compared to most hospitals, right? So I am uh, one to want to highlight all the positives. I don't want to dwell on the negatives. But what I really don't like is when they mess with kids, right? Whether it's anxiety mm-hmm. with the masks or sensory issues, right? I mean, because as soon as you start touching the mask, that's going to negate, you know, the cleanliness uh, factor, right? Anyways, so I'm grateful for telemedicine. I think that was a, a great thing for this whole CV era to allow people to, to have more access to care, even from the comfort of their own home if they can't they can't get in, especially for mental health services. I have a very dear friend who is an incredible clinical psychologist, and he's been able to see, you know, his patients full time, you know, from home. And for a lot of people, that's, that's great. It takes away the anxiety of having to get ready and go to a medical facility and go to an appointment. They can just show up in the comfort of their own home. Mm -hmm. So I really don't like certain extreme views around healthcare, right? But what I I think it's most important is to have an open conversation and bring an open heart to those conversations because the stories, including like my own vaccine injury, that are pushed aside like they don't exist is really dangerous for all of us, no matter what you believe. We don't want to repeat certain things in history. 
you can't mess with the kids. And so I thank God that the bill did not pass in Oregon because like California, the CV injection would already be mandated here in Oregon. Mm -hmm. And in other states, there's so many great grassroots groups across the nation, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, mainly moms and dads and, and professionals who know medicine intimately, who don't want the state to practice medicine without a license, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and we're seeing a lot of the, they're trying to take the authority away from the parents and do these things like on the slide, like, oh, your parents don't have to know. So that's why, like you said, it's so important to pay attention. What's happening? What's the FDA saying? How are these flip-flopping on everything they're telling us? Have they really advocated health this whole time? Vitamin D, sunshine, how you can take care of your immune system you know, all these banned drugs that are, you know, Nobel award winning drugs that have been proven to work. People have been canceled. Like it's insane. So really pay attention. They're trying to get rid of homeopathy. They're trying to get rid of like natural health, the stuff that we gravitate towards. Like, you know, there's so many vitamins that we take to keep ourselves in optimal form that are, they're trying to do away with because there's no money in it. Natural health is going to what, like a seven in the next couple of years, it's going to be a multi-trillion dollar industry. So they're trying to get, you know, and that's why the, the V has been introduced so much over the last couple of years. They didn't want anything else to compete with it. So that is what we've seen happen. And like you were saying with the kids, when they're going after kids and the masking and over protecting them, not being around other kids, not sampling the environment. And that goes for adults as well. We're just going to see a big increase of people getting sick with the littlest thing. That's what this whole thing that's happening now with this RSV or the regular common cold or the flu, it's going to be worse because they're not used to getting that outside stimulus, which we need in order to keep us healthy. We're always sampling viruses all the time to keep our immune system healthy. And so what you've created with the Renewal Wellness Care Center is so needed right now. And a lot of people are going to be seeking that as they become a more aware of what has happened, actually happened over the last couple of years. The ones that are willing to look and open their eyes and see what's happening. I mean, died suddenly. We're seeing people are just, you know, they're, they're dropping dead or they're getting myocarditis. Kids are getting heart attacks. Like, this is not normal. And so if people are beginning, hmm, not just for vaccine, but just for their overall health, like, but we are going to see an uptick in this people that are needing the renewal care wellness center. So I think this is so well divinely timed for you to open right now, as we're seeing all these symptoms of what we, we saw was going to happen. It's happening now and how people can come to your center and really rebalance themselves and come back to more optimal health. This has been a lifelong dream of yours, I know. And when we finally got back in touch, I'm like, oh my God, you did it. You opened it because you had (laughs) talked about how you had wanted to do that. And then you, it came to fruition and now you're open. Can you talk about how this has been a dream of yours and how it, you know, how the pieces fell into place? Yeah, it, it, it truly is. And it's a part of the same pathway that you know, started a long time ago before I even was given the the vision for renewal. And it was like a raindrop. It was just bestowed upon me. I feel like from God and in just one instant, I saw the entire picture, the entire vision all at once in 2018. And so it was very disheartening to kind of get pulled on other battlefronts, if you will, and put it aside a couple different times and then pick it back up. Uh, and to continue to develop the business and, and flip the model in the wellness space as well with trying to decrease the barrier to entry for access to these modalities. So, but it, it makes perfect sense. Actually, the timing is completely divine and there's an even bigger need for growing your toolkit, right? Uh, for, for all ages. I think education around some of these modalities, you know, pulsed electromagnetic uh, field therapy is something that you tried when you were visiting. Mm-hmm. And it's incredible. It's, again, relaxed based, non-invasive, uh, scientifically backed, and fairly age inclusive. So, and there are, you know, 2000 papers around the world about this technology, and it's not brand new, and it actually mimics and enhances what we can do naturally for free outside by connecting barefoot Grounding. and mm-hmm. being around ocean waves or water or the wind through trees. There's so many things that really nourish our physical, emotional, and spiritual bodies out in nature, right? And so 
I think creating this urban urban retreat center, if you will, so people don't have to go out on, you know, these multi-day excursions to try to go and de-stress that they can come for a half a day or come for a day and truly attain that locally is, is huge. I think that mental health in the last couple of years has gotten worse, both for kids and adults. And real health is not just physical health. It's emotional and mental health as well. It's, it's a holistic picture we need to look at. So creating a space, I think, modeled after what Europe's been doing so well with, you know, wellness rooms, even small hotels have sort of these wellness areas. And there's not a lot of gadgets with them. They might have a sauna, but sometimes it's just beautiful windows looking out at nature with lounge chairs that during the winter, you can still kind of immerse yourself in that natural light with that beautiful view. So coming and staying right? Whether it's for an hour, two, three, four, even five hours, whatever your schedule can can afford is an opportunity to slow down and get present with yourself. Because often we seek for gratification or approval outside of ourselves and catches up with us. We don't take the time to stop and check in or just being a very busy mom or busy, you know, professional you don't have an opportunity to check in with yourself. And that's really important. And that's part of, I think, the early detection for health that's needed in all of healthcare is to stop and figure things out. If you're not feeling well, those symptoms are really important indicators of something in your lifestyle, something in your environment is not working well for you, whatever that may be, whether it's you know, dietary or environmental, you know, who knows? But if we don't take the time to stop and slow down, and figure it out, that's when I feel like things escalate. And then all of a sudden you find yourself with a really hard hitting diagnosis that's much harder to address in a, in a really holistic way. And I think that we glamorize stress in some ways differently here than in Europe. My husband is from Austria. And so I've been really blessed to spend a lot of time over in parts of Europe and see the difference in cultures with, you know, the amount of vacation days or sick days or maternity leave, but also just the mentality. People uh, over here live to work in a different way. And over there, they work to live. Mm -hmm. And I I heard that, you know, uh, so many times. And it it took me truly being over there for a couple of weeks to go, aha, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. And being social and having a community around you is, is something that they really um, drive towards. And even meals, like going out to a restaurant, you might even get into a conversation with the table next to you mm-hmm. or with the restaurant owner, or it's just so different. You know, I, I just have some of my fondest memories of being in Italy and not realizing where we were eating was actually the table next to like the family of um, the people who own the restaurant. And it turned into like a several hours affair of uh, our daughter playing and hanging out with their daughter, even though my daughter only speaks a couple of Italian words. And it just, people live in the moment. And until you experience that on the regular and you schedule for that, things just go by so quickly. Mm-hmm. And you focus, I feel like, on the wrong things. And then you wake up and you're 40 or 50 or 60 and there's this gap of unhappiness or there's this gap in your health with actual well-being. And then you lose the ability to go out and do some of the the activities you might even want to go do, like hiking, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's just a larger conversation that I think uh, we need to have. And we've just sadly allowed through being less civically engaged in ways we've allowed for corporate dollars to truly influence policies and procedure and society. I'm all for a free market where we can choose, we can vote with our dollars, you know, each and every day uh, with, you know, spending our dollars towards businesses or brands that, you know, resonate with you. And I I hope this message gets out there for people because it it actually matters. You know, when you, when you shop local, when you find a local artisan or service provider, that money stays in your local economy. When you shop online, so few cents or dollars go back to your local 
economy. And that makes a difference, Mm -hmm. right? So part of having a thriving community is, is supporting your local community and voting with your dollars and being an advocate, getting engaged civically and being content enough in yourself and grounded enough in yourself to find your voice and be willing to share about your own experiences. I, I did not, I don't like talking about my own injury. I don't mm-hmm. want to belabor it. I don't want to be, you know, gaslit by some people. They try to come back and say, oh, that didn't happen to you. Oh, it wasn't related. I, but I don't worry about what other people say, mm-hmm. honestly. Um, just trying to serve my community, my family, the state, and beyond with uh, making a difference. Mm-hmm. And you showing up like that and standing in your power and standing in your truth gives other people the courage to do the same because a lot of people that have experienced what you have feel so alone and so so isolated. And, you know, maybe they do want to speak about it, but they're afraid. But the more they see other people doing it, the more that it gives them the courage to do that because we need more voices in our world right now. And it's, it's super important. There's a lot more coming for us, but people like yourself and all these communities, community is so important because we've lost that in our Western world. And that is for our own happiness. It's for our own well being. It's for our own, our community helps our own health because it's our, you know, it's, it's, we belong to something bigger than ourselves and right. that's and it, lost. Yeah, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, and it's so obvious again with children, you know, um, even infants, like they need touch, they need connection, they need community. They physically will not thrive without Mm -hmm. it. Why is it any different when we're adults? It's not, it's not, it doesn't mean you have to have a a large network, but it's important to have that community. That's a part of our wellness. And, and I, I believe in the blue zones where people live the oldest Mm -hmm. community is a big part of the reason why they live to these great ages that a lot of other populations do not. Yeah. And when you were talking about Italy, I was like, Oh, I miss it. I haven't traveled in the last couple of years because obvious reasons. And I, I miss it. And it is, they do, you know, they live what was that work? To, they don't work to live. What was that again? I, I use that yeah. myself, but I can't think of it. They, they don't they live do. to they work. work to, yeah. They work to live, right? Work is a means of generating exactly. income to go out and live life the way they want to, to yeah. have delicious foods, to um, travel, you know, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. That's always been my motto as well. I'm like, I don't want it. Like my work isn't my life. Like, I don't want to just work and hustle and grit and grind and all that. And, but I did hear something recently because a lot of it's like work, 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 you know, power through hustle. But I think there was somewhere in New York. I don't remember what city it was where, or what company they implemented a four day week work week instead of a five day work week, but all these little boxes and you get maybe two weeks vacation a year and you're working every day, you know, 60 hours a week, you know, that's going to really detriment your health and um you know your well-being and like you said you get older and you've got this emptiness and you know you're not taking care of your health or your own satisfaction all of a sudden you're 75 years old and not physically able to do it anymore so that's why it's really important to like really intuit what you're you need you know mentally physically emotionally and do the things that are in alignment that will keep you thriving well into your 80s and so forth So what do you see? I know your facility can help so many people and so many disorders, like, you know, you can help athletics, brain health, there's blood pressure. It can help inflammation, like with your oxygen chamber. So what are the, some of the things that people can come in with as an ailment that you can help treat? Well, thank you for that. There, there are a variety of things that uh, clinical research has demonstrated and actually our website renewal.care uh, has an entire studies and research section dedicated just to hyperbaric oxygen therapy um, showing results, right? The proof is in the pudding. I, I tell everyone, right? But inflammation is often an underlying cause for so many issues and symptoms in the body. Uh, hyperbaric oxygen is, is tremendous at supporting the reduction of inflammation. There are a variety of things that it can support. Really, it's 
there'd be too many things to list right here. Um, I think that pain, living with pain is a big one, right? People have acute injury. I used it when I tore my rotator cuff. It was huge. I actually was interviewed by a friend uh, in the Epic Times about my uh, healing journey with my shoulder because it was so different than another mutual friend who's a doctor who had that year long process and he went mm -hmm. into surgery eventually. And I was able to completely buck that. I just did laser and hyperbaric and a few other things. And I was, I never had surgery. I was better within, you know, about a month. And this shoulder is actually still better than this one, <laughs> even though this one had a full tear. Mm -hmm. So oxygen is profound, but it allows the body to release stem cells and then have more fuel to create more stem cells. So under pressure, uh, you're going below sea level, basically in a, in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber, and it allows oxygen to be infused into your plasma, which then your red blood cells can carry to more places. So each individual might have different issues, whether it's autoimmune, acute, or a long-term issue. Um, it can be very supportive. There's mm -hmm. clinical research showing even for people who've had a stroke a few years ago, that it can uh, possibly go in and undo some of that. But all that I want to bring forward are modalities that support the body's own innate abilities, right? And I want to create an environment that reduces stress, that supports the individual to find themselves to, to be grounded and try things and figure out what works for them. Mm -hmm. I'm really not doing anything other than facilitating what you actually already have the capability of doing. And it's just bringing the tools forward to support your journey. Mm -hmm. Because nothing's ever really going to heal you. You heal yourself. Just like when you're going in for therapy or you're trying to overcome some trauma, we're the ones that do our work. You can, you're the guide and you're the facilitator for our own healing because you don't want to be reliant on something, a medicine or, or some kind of treatment or keep going back to therapy. You want to get yourself to a, a space where you're healed and you don't need it anymore, or you're healed and you don't need some other person to heal you. You're the facilitator for it, for our own healing. And going back to how you said you had healed your shoulder in the, in the oxygen chamber faster than somebody that didn't, didn't you use the life vessel for another injury, the life, life vessel where you went for four treatments and you were just completely transformed. Can you explain what the life vessel is and what the treatment you went in for? Absolutely. You know, um, I didn't have an acute injury, if you will. I definitely had a really high amount of stress that had been accumulating. I was able to utilize the life vessel that was in Santa Barbara, California, uh, my hometown. And I did four sessions in January of 2020. So before everything kind of came down the pike, CV and but following a very, very contentious legislative cycle and being heavily involved on the grassroots side, as well as having a, you know, an agency and a, and a young child, I got to do four sessions and the life vessel combines modalities of light, mostly red and blue light dominant therapies, sound frequency and vibration therapies and far infrared all in one non-pressurized chamber in a beautiful chamber. Uh, lined with high-end, beautiful softwood, just like a grand piano. So it reverberates sound in this incredible way. It's FDA cleared actually as a class two medical device with five patents on it for stress reduction and relaxation therapy. And I actually bought those sessions. This is how I feel like I've been guided so many times um, from something much bigger than me. I bought those 10 years ago when I was that type A personality and I did not have a child, we had disposable income. I spent a bunch of money on a package. Um, and so she was actually closing her center down. She didn't know what was coming down the pike either, but I went, oh my gosh, I spent $600, I think on four sessions. And I went, I don't wanna lose that value. So I happened to be traveling from Oregon to California during that time family matter. And so I was able to get through four sessions in kind of an expedited schedule across a couple days. It took 10 years of stress off my life. That's mm. my quantitative descriptor, right? 10 years of stress. It just completely melted away this emotional stress that in turn then allowed my body to alleviate some physical symptom. And that was the first time I saw how distinctly related stress and the body were. 
and how in America, I really don't feel like people understand that they, they might have heard it and they understand about sleep and they understand about rest, but stress is different than that, you know, and it can be cumulative, right? So we didn't even have the life vessel as a modality in our business plan when we were, you know, mm. creating the business plan around the vision I had been given. And my husband hadn't even tried it. And it's way more expensive than even both our <laughs> chambers. But I said, this is so important. And there are zero contraindications for people who can get in there. It's age inclusive as well. Kids can get in there. And it's powerful mm -hmm. and relaxing and nurturing. It's like the closest thing probably to feeling like you're in the womb again, mm -hmm. right? It's warm and inviting and beautiful and quiet and protected. So mm -hmm. it's been an honor to bring that modality to the Pacific Northwest. We're the only ones with a life vessel in Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Montana, and I don't know how many other states. There's only about 12 to 15 in center locations around the U.S. Mm -hmm. Many of them are going into private high-end homes for people who, who become aware of it and have the capital to, to bring one in. They're so profound. But uh, that, that's just like next level. Because that's tapping into the emotional well-being, you know, releasing the trauma, the emotional traumas so that your body can catch up, actually. So I think that that's one of my most exciting offerings, and it's a very signature offering for us. And I hope to continue to bring it to more people at more locations because I've seen people go in and then come out. And I can see the stress around their mm -hmm. eyes dissipating. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can feel it. I'm an empath, right? But um, I, I, I listen and I, I just ask questions. I don't try to project onto someone what their experience may or may not be like because it's totally unique to the individual. And it's, it's just, it's rad. That's, <laughs> I thought so amazing. too. So I walked through your facility. It's beautiful, inviting facility, the scents, the sounds, the just the beautiful walls, like the wood. It's, it's a very warm and inviting space. And I looked at all your modalities. I love the oxygen chamber. I do want to do that sometime. But what, as soon as I saw the life vessel, I was like, oh my God, I was like, oh, just, I just want to come in. And I did get to experience it. It was, is really amazing. And you know, it felt very warm, very warm in there. The light that was in there was very, very warm and the sound going through the bottom of it and, you know, all around. And it's something that's going to be really helpful to the Pacific Northwest as we're going to the winter, because we get winters here. I mean, <laughs> we get the winters that are just gray and yucky and not getting that vitamin D from the sun. And, and I think it's going to help so many people with their emotional state and their stressors. And like you said, stress is what is one of the first signs of disease in the body. So if we can combat that and for these winter blahs and help that and really help our bodies through the winter time, which is, you know, not just here in the PNW, but it's across most of the country, unless you're in Southern California and some other States. So yeah. And then the, the, the healing of sound, you know, all the different megahertz is and the meridian points and all that. So you're not only healing your physical body, but your energetic body as well in your emotional state. And what a beautiful modality to bring. And it's literally, you look in that room, it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and there's a funny story because you look in that room and we actually had to cut a wall and go through the atrium, through the doorway, cut a wall, go through the wall and then patch up the wall, you know, and so actually to get it in that beautiful treatment room, um, mm -hmm. it was quite, quite the journey. I, I shared about that on, on Instagram. So mm -hmm. renewal care wellness, uh, is our handle on Instagram. And I, I really try to showcase inside and out all that we offer. It's been so much fun and an honor to have people coming through, you know, we just launched more recently and it's, it's just exciting. I, my cup is filled to hear about how other people are resonating with it. And again, just having more tools for the toolkit. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think that obviously to be well and not be dependent on anything is, is ideal, but I'm not trying to replace, you know, any kind of care uh, that someone needs. I, I want to be complimentary and I mm -hmm. want to be a companion option for people. Um, and ultimately I want people to come in as a family. I want self-care to be shown 
as something that's important that we value this time in, in this life. And if we have a traumatic time or a stressful period in our lives, a, that season that can be, you know, defining in some ways, but how do we nurture ourselves on the other side of that season to create space, mm -hmm. you know, for the next chapter. And I think that for kids everywhere, especially, you know, Oregon had a lot of really strict policies. Um, how can we support kids to better process what, what did occur to move forward, to help them flourish as they enter the, the next chapters of their life and really just kind of get grounded. You know, so many kids are searching for who they are right now and we are not broken. People mm -hmm. are not broken. And I, I just hate that, that they're, I mean, I, I went through that being a, a young girl, you know, in Southern California, look a certain way to act a certain way or whatever was how I was supposed to be. And we need to be radically ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, cause that's where our soul just is happiest. And that's when I think like we attract the most incredible gifts into our lives and we're rewarded when we honor that, you know, the sooner that uh, we can tap into that as children, even the, the better and the happier our existence is gonna be throughout this entire journey. Mm -hmm. Because when we strip away these layers and we obtain optimal health, we're more in tune with divine intuition. We're more in tune with the divine and, and kids need that nowadays, especially with what is being taught in these schools where they're just, there's, it feels like there's more division and separation than, than anything for them to be able to come to this uh, your wellness center with their family and get these treatments like it's going to help them thrive so much in their life. Now you offer some members, you offer memberships where people can get discounted treatments. And I know that you have like day packages. Can you go into some of those options? Absolutely. That was the other thing, even with my super gnarly acute injury with my shoulder, having a four-year-old daughter at the time, uh, running a business, being as busy as ever, I still wasn't comfortable plopping down a thousand dollars at one time for a treatment modality I had never tried mm -hmm. um, in order though, to attain a lower price point per service. Now I totally get it. It works and it's a tried and true model for so many wellness centers. But for us, my husband and I have worked with countless businesses on the national level, international level, and we just wanted to shake it up. And so we decided that by offering a membership, a small monthly fee, instantly gave people access to discounted services, that they did not have to buy a package in order to get a discounted service. And mm -hmm. sometimes you have an acute injury or you have an issue or you have higher stress levels, maybe you wanna come in more frequently than other months, right? And so you can turn it on like a tap and then turn off the tap and you're not committed with large packages and feeling awkward about that. It just, it didn't feel right. And it felt like that was part of the barrier to entry to some of these therapies out there in the world. And so having, you know, memberships for professional teams, right? And families or individuals allows them to have access to lots of perks. We have a whole body vibration machine that's wonderful. They, you know, we don't charge to use it when they come in. We offer obviously a lot of nourishing snacks, healthy snacks. We have, you know, different ways to hydrate. It's really important to hydrate our bodies. Dehydration is such an issue. And it's not just with good, clean water, but electrolytes and minerals and things like that. So we often have coconut water and electrolyte options that are, you know, ones that my practitioner friends have recommended, you know, alkaline spring water. But again, it's the full experience and we want members to feel at home, whether they want to come in and play Connect Four on our you know, wood version, we have uh, a lot of fun games and things like that for kids and adults to just come in and hang mm -hmm. out for a bit, mm -hmm. um, to just drop in. We have a combo that's an even further discounted option where if you come in and do the hyperbaric oxygen, oxygen in the same day with the life vessel, you know, back to back that we reduce it from the member discounts, even another 10%. Uh, because we want people to come in and have a few hours because they will experience even more calm for their nervous system and have even more uh, 
therapies layered to help their bodies activate a bit more. So, so they'll come in and they'll float out. <laughs> Everyone will be like, yeah. what's your secret? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's important. The proof is in the pudding. I really want to encourage people to, to try things out for themselves. And that's again, why we have a different you know, business model um, where they can come in, even if they're a member just for one month, it still makes sense to be a member, even if they're just doing one service, because that's how much we've discounted the uh, sessions. So it's, it's exciting. And I feel like there's so much more to come. There's modalities that, you know, if I had an, a, a big checkbook, I would continue to add in that qualify as relaxed based, non-invasive, age inclusive, and very scientifically backed. Those are sort of our umbrella uh, parameters. So I can't wait to see what the future holds and to collaborate with practitioners and collaborate mm. with, you know, all, all forms of medicine that are out there. There's a lot of really um, traditional forms for, you know, Native Americans. There's things that we can learn from, from every culture. I just want to be inclusive mm -hmm. uh, for looking at the toolkit that each person should have access to. And that leads me directly into my next question. As we wrap things up, what are your hopes? I mean, you've given some about going to, into all these different cultures of healing and stuff. What are your hopes for uh, renewal wellness and for, you know, the new health in general? Well, I think that people get activated and I'm hopeful. People are taking their own personal health care a bit more seriously now. You know, everyone kind of got a big wake up call. All of us did. All of us were very concerned and very alert to look at what was happening. I think people realize there's a lot of underlying basics that cannot and should not be ignored with, you know, light, uh, safe sun exposure, you know, vitamin D supplementation. If you can't get into the lights, uh, spending time in nature, there are so many free options for supporting optimal health, you know, sleep being paramount, healthy screen hygiene habits, right? Um, I, I love my phone. I need to have parameters with it. Otherwise I'm truly messing up with my mm -hmm. circadian rhythms. So I think that there's this new activation that a lot of people have as well as practitioners. There's so many practitioners who have shifted gears to open their own toolkits and open their own uh, thinking for the body's circadian rhythms and, and how to incorporate that with the modalities that they offer, right? Um, and asking more questions. You know, my family member, I, I won't go into specifics here, but was at an appointment recently and they finished the appointment with, well, what else do you think I could be doing? And that led to a whole layer of discussion that had that family member not just simply asked that question, they wouldn't have gotten that mm. professional input from, from a very amazing doctor, right? So it's, it's important to ask questions. Mm -hmm. and, and lean into that. I think even practitioners are hesitant to share their thoughts. So I, I think just building that relationship within yourself and within your practitioner community, within your immediate network, you know, ask people what, what worked for you for this situation? What worked for you? And share about what worked for you. It, it's going to be different for everyone. I, I was totally struck with the gloomy weather, you know, when I moved to Oregon uh, from sunny Santa Barbara. One thing that helped me because I grew up getting to go to an orange and lemon ranch my entire you know, life because my grandparents ran an orange and lemon orchard, the smell of oranges mm -hmm. for whatever reason and the smell of orange blossom in the winter was very, very uplifting, right? And so that simple thing with diffusing wild orange in my, in my environment was one layer. And I actually noticed it helped not just me, but everyone in my household. Right. And then I could look at other things, but when we have conversations, we can learn from others. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's, what's really important and honoring that those firsthand accounts, when someone is talking to you about what happened to them, not dismissing it mm -hmm. and truly listening and asking questions. So we can learn from each other and we can head towards a brighter future when we take the time. And I want to be, you know, a hope dispensary, right? I want people to find hope that they too can connect inward, which will help them connect outward into their own community 
to be their best selves. Mm, Beautiful. Now, I know that you earlier on, you had given your Instagram and your um, website for the best ways for people to find you. So those are your best ways. Can you go over those again? Is your Instagram and do you have a YouTube or, or wherever, wherever people can find you and where your facility is located? Absolutely. Thank you so much. So we're in Beaverton, just outside of Southwest Portland, and we're right off the 217. It's very easy to get to us. So our address is on our website, renewal.care. So not .com, but .care, renewal.care. And we've got, you know, uh, Instagram at Renewal Care Wellness. We've got a YouTube, we've got a LinkedIn, we've got a Pinterest. And really, we, we are trying to make sure that those who have experiences with us, um, you know, look to Yelp and Google to share their experiences because we want people to, to learn from others about what their experience has been like. But Instagram is probably where I post the most content and it's been really fun. We've actually been helping, you know, we help people who are healthy too, right? Live uh, their best life if it's training. And so we've been helping a UFC fighter, Journey Newsom, And it's just incredible because oxygen is not a mainstream thing with the UFC and MMA community yet. Yet these guys and and gals actually really need it because they get you know, beat up regularly Mm -hmm. and their body takes a beating. And so it's been fun to um, reach out to the professional sports segment uh, in our immediate community and work with them. So I would say Instagram is kind of fun because you'll get the day-to-day and you'll see the inside scoop, but we've got a a phone number. You can reach us 503-724-1212. I I love that we got that phone number. And I know this oh, is it's actually 1212. recorded on 1212. <laughs> Woo, the portal is open. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I, I really Whee! just want to say thank you too. Yeah, well, I, I do. Okay, if we're sharing crystals and that's going to stay yep. on here, I do have my two favorite pieces of knowledge. That is gorgeous. Yes. So one yep. bumpy, one smooth, mm-hmm. right? You have to tell um, me what that one is. It matches your yeah. jacket. Oh, thank you. Well, malachite, it's almost copper. Mm, malachite the copper family. But you know, there's so much we can learn from from history and we can look at science for what you know what's going forward, right? For modalities that are going to be released soon. And everyone just needs to to advocate for themselves and find what works for them. And mm-hmm. don't be afraid to use your voice. You never know when you share your story who it will impact and Mm -hmm. how it will impact this world. And I've had to be a bit more brave to share my own vaccine injury story. But if it means that I get to help others, then I I gladly will. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a shame that your own experiences, you, a lot of people have had to hide because there's been so much backlash over the last couple of years over it. And you're, you're physically experiencing all these things and you're not feeling well and you've been injured, but yet it doesn't exist. And no, you're a bad person for even talking about it. So using your voice and talking about your experiences, like Amber says, is you've got to, it, it'll help somebody else to share their stories. And by sharing your stories, you're helping others. So, um, but I love this. Thank you so much for sharing everything. And one last question I always ask, I know you have to go. I ask all my guests, what does it mean for you to live with an awakened heart? If I truly sat here and asked myself this question, I could, I could probably just cry Mm. because for me, it means living connected on all levels with those in my immediate environment, with myself, you know, with, with God and um, allowing allowing for the flow of information, both from what I receive and what I research, but also like the vision I had for renewal many years ago and to have the vision of, you know, the the hindsight is 2020, right. And to look back and see this path that I've uh, been put on and to not have any remorse and to actually just have a sense of gratitude, even though it was very difficult and hard at times, just living in a, in a place of gratitude to me is an awakened heart Mm. Um, because it allows us to pivot when we need to, even when things are difficult. Mm. I love that. That's beautiful. Gratitude. Gratitude opens up so much for our entire life, our hearts. It opens us up to abundance. It opens us up to so many gifts and 
my gift is having you on today and what you are offering with your new center and all your advocacy for health freedom. Thank you, Amber, for being here and sharing yourself and your dream that became a reality and now is offered here in Oregon. And I know eventually you want to open them up all over the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that right now too, there's so many individuals who will connect in with that path. And that's going to be a beautiful thing too, is, you know, meeting people like you and others who just have so many talents in this world and sharing those talents. Um, I just want to thank you for having me on and giving mm -hmm. me an opportunity to, to share from my heart to yours. And I just appreciate you so much. I feel the same with you. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. Well, Amber, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you as well. Bye. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Awaken Heart Podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, share it with a friend. And if you haven't already, head on over to your favorite podcast app to subscribe, rate, and review. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, you can reach me at the awakenheartpodcast.com.